Good morning. Wow. <laughs> Welcome to worship on the second Sunday in Lent. I know we're all concerned about what's happening in Ukraine. Just now, no more donations of goods are required, but we can still give through the Disasters Emergency Committee, the Red Cross, or the UNHCR. And we can pray. And thankfully, many are praying. I'm sure we're praying that there will be an end to the evil that Putin is unleashing upon the Ukrainians, even on, on its mothers and babies. It just seems absolutely horrendous. I'm sorry to have to announce the death of a member, Mrs. Trudy Nicholl of Lichtenfels Gardens. We don't know the details of the service yet. Trudy's sister, Miss Mayor, is here with us this morning, and we extend our deepest sympathies to you and the family. Tea and coffee is served in the hall after this service. It would be good if you could join the folk then. So let us worship God, we sing to his praise and glory, one of my favorite hymns, Lord, I Come to You. Bring 
with you the spirit leads me on in the power of your love now ross will lead us in prayer thanks ross Morning. Uh, let us pray. Everlasting, ever gracious, ever seeking, and ever calling God, yours is the offer of life, because the gift of life itself is yours. You call the universe into being, and through interactions, space and time come to be. Stars and galaxies form, their dust gives potential for life, and we find ourselves here, alive, praising you. We are awestruck not only by not only at the grandeur of creation, but the miracle of incarnation. You choose, in Jesus the Christ, to be born as one of us, living among us, showing your grace and telling your love. To be excluded from us, shunned and hated, dying among us, still showing grace and declaring love. To meet us risen, inviting us to listen that we may live. God of endless goodness, we praise you. Amen. Now, here's a great big nasty word that's on the screen. (laughs) Temptation. (laughs) Temptation is when you want to do something you feel wrong, you know is wrong, but you really want to do it. I wonder why Jesus got us to pray, lead us not into temptation. That's in the Lord's Prayer. And we pray that almost every Sunday. And some people pray it every day. It's as if there are two voices inside of us. One says, go on, do it. You'll love it. The other is saying, don't do it. It looks nice, but it'll just bring you trouble. Lots of things lead us into temptation. It could be something we could easily grab and maybe steal, which doesn't belong to us. Something we think would be really good if we had it. Like this. <laughs> Mum has told us not to take a cookie. But we see the cookie jar full. And we think, oh, she'll not miss one. But maybe she has them counted. And maybe she's got visitors coming. And with one less... Maybe they all couldn't get one. Maybe you've been told not to eat chocolate, but there's this lovely piece of chocolate cake, and it looks so lonely sitting by itself. And surely you'd be helping mum by eating it. No, you wouldn't. Maybe you're at a friend's house, And mum has told you, you must eat only things that are good for you. The friend says, how would you like to go to McDonald's for tea? Oh, McDonald's food just tastes so lovely. Your friend says, it would be a lot tastier than the vegetables my mum's cooking for your tea. You could choose to do that, or you could refuse to go to McDonald's with your friend and stick to what your mum said, and stay for a vegetable tea. Hmm. There's lots of temptations all around us. In shops, which have lovely things on display, oh, and you'd love to have them all. But you know, that would be greedy. But a wee voice inside you says, go on, help yourself. You deserve it. It'll all be fun. Nobody will mind and nobody will notice. God will. Jesus had a big battle with the devil who was trying to get Jesus to do wrong. He challenged Jesus to turn stones into bread. And Jesus was really, really, really hungry at the time. But he trusted his heavenly Father to look after him. The devil tried other ways to make Jesus fail, offering him a quick success, but Jesus would not be tempted. 
That tells us that Jesus is strong to help us any time that we feel that voice inside us saying, do something wrong. His voice inside us says, don't do the wrong thing. Do something right and I'll help you. Jesus wants us to pray this. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. If we do give in to temptation and do what is wrong, yeah, we do all the time, then we may land in ways, however, that make us do wrong much more often. Temptations are there all the time. Like to be nasty to somebody, to talk back, to go about thinking we're better than others, to take what's not ours, to tell lies, to cheat, because we think we can get off with it. God is watching us. Jesus can help us beat back these strong feelings that we have that we know we shouldn't have. We can resist these strong pulls because Jesus is inside us to give us the strength and we just have to ask the story of temptation. And we're all tempted and sometimes most of the time. We're now going to sing, I will call upon the Lord. come and read our passage. I've never heard that song sung that way before. That was wonderful. Good morning. morning. It's from Luke's Gospel, chapter 4, verses 1 to 13. Better put these on. (laughs) The temptation of Jesus. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the desert, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell this stone to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man does not live on bread alone. The devil led him to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, 
I will give you all all their authority and splendour, for it has been given to me, and I can give it to anyone I want to. So if you worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. The devil led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered, it says, do not put your Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished all this tempting, he left him until an opportune time. Thanks be to God. For the- Thanks very much, Roberta. Now, Erin will lead us in a prayer. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the many, many blessings in our lives. All we have comes from you, so we come with thankful hearts this morning. We thank you for food, for warmth, and we thank you that we have a place to call home. We pray for those who are hungry, those who are homeless. We thank you for jobs that provide for our families and supply the needs of society. We pray for those who have no work or the dignity and purpose it brings. We thank you for the opportunities and choices for meaning and challenge. We give thanks for our faith and the promises we have in you. We pray for those who feel trapped, for those who feel they have no hope. We thank you, Lord, for our health for medicines, for our health service and those emergency services who so skillfully take care of us. We pray for all who are sick and all who care for them. We thank you for family and friends who love and care for us. Lord, at this time we pray for those who are grieving the loss of a loved one. We thank you for our freedom that we can come and worship in our churches with our church families. We pray for our brothers and sisters across the world for whom this is dangerous or impossible for. Lord, we give thanks for all these blessings. We are so aware of all we have and we turn our prayers, our hearts, our minds to our brothers and sisters in Ukraine for whom in an unimaginable way all they knew, all they had, the life they lived is being devastated hour by hour. We give thanks for all who are helping in a whole variety of ways. We pray for an end to the devastation. We pray for safety and we pray for each and every person, every man, every woman, the leaders at each family, the elderly, those who are displaced, those who fight and their loved ones not knowing if and when they'll see them again. Lord, please open our eyes, our ears, our hearts and direct us to any small way that we may help from our small corner of the world. We bring these, our prayers, in the name of Jesus, our Saviour. Amen. Thanks to Aaron. Now in these times of uncertainty that we don't know what's happening, we remind ourselves there is a higher throne. There is a higher throne
pray. Lord, help us always to remember in whatever situation of difficulty, distress, that the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A TV program some years ago showed some children of about four years old struggling with temptation. They were left alone in a room sitting in front of two or three M&Ms. You know, the brightly colored chocolate sweeties. And they had been told you could have a whole pack of M&Ms if you just sit and wait for a bell that would ring in five minutes. The struggle of temptation was recorded through a two-way mirror. The result was hilarious as these poor kids fidgeted, wriggled, and screwed up their faces trying not to grab those M&Ms. About half of them made it, but the other half said in effect, blow it, I want what I want and I want it now. The consequences for these children who gave in to temptation were mild, at least from an adult point of view. But for a four-year-old, missing out on a pack of M&Ms is almost traumatic. However, for the rest of us, the results of falling into temptation can be devastating. We've all seen it. A police officer was sent to jail for taking advantage of a young girl. In Ireland, bishops and priests were dismissed after their years of abusing children in their care homes. Four MPs and a Lord, all lawmakers, were prosecuted for fiddling their expenses. Our Prime Minister may well be fined for breaking COVID regulations that he himself declared that all must obey. But you read or hear of these things every single day in life. As one commentator said, temptation is a booby trap in life's journey. It's a kind of monopoly board moment. Pass, go, collect 200, skip all the hard stuff, and proceed directly to fulfillment and reward. You can have it all and now. But that's not the truth of the matter, and that's to trivialize it. I wonder if you've heard this prayer. Lord, thank you so much for being with me today. I have not gossiped, nor have I spoken a cross word. My thoughts have been on you, and I'm thinking of the people in my life with love in my heart. I have not been angry, sarcastic, or impatient. Now, Lord, please help me as I get out of bed this morning. As one writer has put it, to live is to be tempted, sometimes mildly, sometimes with gut-wrenching severity. The good news is the power of Jesus Christ is available to us in every single situation of temptation. He comes into the thick of things with us to strengthen us. That's the message of the second Sunday in Lent. The Gospel writers tell us, 
We don't have a Jesus who stays detached from life's hurts and failures, but one who's been through the worst and one who goes through all, even the worst, with you and me. So none of us has been bad enough for him to desert us. None of us has fallen so deeply that he cannot grasp hold of us and haul us up onto our feet again. There is never a time when he is not with us. He knows all about our struggles because he's been there himself. Listen, if you're just sitting there and you've been very hurt by a fall into temptation, then remember this. God often has to hurt deeply those he wants to use greatly. There's tremendous hope in this message today. And today I want you to get that hope and to refuse to be defeated. We see right at the commencement of Jesus' ministry, before he even speaks one public word or calls one disciple or touches one hurting life, he is slammed with crushing temptations and an extremely vulnerable moment in his life. True to form, as with all daunting temptations, the enemy, the devil, shows up at his most powerful when physical strength is depleted and when people are emotionally and spiritually hung out to dry. There was Jesus, suffering after 40 days in the wilderness, and along comes the devil and says, Hey, Jesus, you can have it all. Forget the rejection, the humiliation, the pain and agony of the cross. And for what? You can have all the kingdoms of the world in exchange for just one little act of worship. Do it. Cross your fingers behind your back if you like. Who's to know? That was a very strong temptation. But it was just one. When people speak of the temptations of Christ, they usually have in mind the three specific temptations that Luke describes in our passage. But the fact is, Jesus had endured 40 days of continuous tempting, followed by these frightful challenges. If Jesus had failed any of these tests, there would be no such thing as the Christian faith. Yet the flip side of this is just as amazing. Jesus didn't give in. And so an incredible spiritual reality emerges. There is such a thing as the Christian faith, and its strength, and it is strong, it means that we don't have to face life's horrendous temptations alone. One who overcame is with us, even in us, to help us at every point. But listen, there is a haunting line at the end of the temptations. Luke says the devil left him until an opportune time. You see, Jesus was tempted throughout his ministry in many ways, and the severest temptation came at the end on the cross in extreme pain, and that was to disavow or curse his father, but he did not. The phrase, an opportune time, reminds us that it's never over until it's over. We have to deal with temptation until the day we leave this earth. David Jeremiah says, Why is it that opportunity knocks once, but it seems that temptation is at my door every single day? But the good news is that Jesus has been there, done that, got the t-shirt, and can help us through it. But let's not forget that opportune time. An opportune time for the enemy can be a time when situation and circumstance combine to enhance the likelihood of his success. We can most easily fall into a temptation when we're tired, when we're idle, when we're bored, when we're weakened, when we're despondent, when everything has gone wrong, when everything's gone downhill, when we've hit rock bottom, and the best we can do is barely look up. It can be when we are like an embarrassed, humiliated Peter, dejected, disgusted, lost in discouragement and defeat. A professional fisherman who toiled, toiled all night and caught nothing. Or like me, early in my ministry, after one disastrous session meeting, I made plans to quit. I felt so much a failure. That was certainly the enemy's opportune time. 
Go on, quick, quit, he says. I'll lead you into something far better. But I've learned this as I've become older and wiser. A more convenient time for the enemy, rather than a time of defeat, can be a time of triumph. When efforts have succeeded beyond my expectations, when I think I'm at the top of my game, when people are singing my praises, I've learned that when I feel things are going well, and I can take liberties, it's then that the wheels are about to fall off the wagon. Any wrong move I make will take away my peace and leave me with troubles that I ought not to have. In the Old Testament, we see that as they sang David's praises, David the giant killer, the hero king, they were forgetting that he learned the hard way that the giants kept coming. Only they came in different shapes and sizes. The opportunity to grab power, the pleasures of a beautiful woman, the chance to get rid of an inconvenient army leader. He learned eventually, if he were to, to diverge from his obedience to God, lose sight of his dependence on God, and trust again in his own strength and power, he was sure to fall. I wonder how many of us, like David, have learned the hard way. But then again, maybe an opportune time for the enemy could be like when Moses was seemingly forgotten and seemingly forsaken in the desert for 40 long years. The truth is that the ritual of the tiresome daily routine, the daily slog, can be desperately difficult and demanding. It can really wear us down and weaken our spiritual defenses. It's very hard to live the Christian life consistently over the long haul. If something attractive looks like an easy escape, we can go for it and ruin our years of faithful hard work for the Lord. Mother Teresa, that saint, had her dark night of the soul. She was ministering to those that others had left just to die. She wrote with weary familiarity of an arid landscape from which, seemingly, the deity had disappeared. That was a very, very low moment for that dear lady of faith, whose life has inspired so many by her holiness, her very closeness to God. There's another opportune time that comes to men with more force than it seems to come to women, though I suspect it's coming to women more and more. It's in the middle years when a person sees that he or she will not achieve their dreams and their ambitions. In creeps cynicism and despair and even disillusionment. I've been there. Midlife crisis, as it's called. As a writer put it, it is when the fumes of yesterday's zeal and vision are all that is left in an empty spiritual tank. You can feel all is lost. The good news is, it never ever is. You've just been blinded by the devil and prevented from seeing the truth about your life and its effects upon others. Midlife can be a springboard for new vision, new ideas, new ways of living. Do you know what can pull somebody out of it? A few words from a friend. One friend called me brother. That reminded me I was not alone, struggling in my own wee world, but part of Christ's worldwide family. Also importantly, prayer to the one who overcomes all evil. And thirdly, some fresh air. That can restore your joy and give you new life. I've told you this because knowing when might be an opportune time for the enemy to strike gives you an awareness of when you really need to rely on Christ to help you. And you need to know beyond a shadow of doubt that the one who will help you is the victorious Jesus Christ, our Savior, who will make you an overcomer. So remember when you're vulnerable, that is an opportune time for the devil. 
But more importantly, remember the victorious Saviour is there with you, even in you, by His Spirit. Listen to the words of Carol Zimbala. When my strength was gone, when my heart had no song, still in love he's proved faithful to me. When my heart looked away, the many times I could not pray, still my God was faithful to me. Every word he's promised is true. What I thought was impossible, I've seen my God do. He's been faithful, faithful to me. Looking back, his love and mercy I see, though in my heart I have questioned and failed to believe. He's been faithful, faithful to me. In closing, remember these words that Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. No temptation has seized you except what is common to man. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. You can resist. Be an overcomer. Shall we pray? Lord, we thank you that Paul wrote when you're tempted, because Lord, we know that we're tempted each day, every day. And for the rest of our lives, we'll be tempted in some kind of way or other. But Lord, help us to remember that as believers, we live in your strength with your spirit within us, equipping us and making us strong to be an overcomer. So Lord, be with us today, and especially with any who feel defeated by various temptations they've had in this past week, even today. Lord, help them know that you're with them, that you'll pull them through, that you'll love them for Jesus' sake. Amen. Now we're going to sing, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine.
to this week knowing you're under God's grace and enveloped in his love. Knowing that when you're faithless, he is faithful. And that when you fail, he can redeem your failure. Knowing that all things are possible for him. And he will keep you in the grip of grace right to the end. That you may be blameless on the day of Christ Jesus. And so may the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit rest and remain upon you throughout this day and always. Amen. The doxology is Lord, I love you. Thank you.